الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. سنات إن شاء الله يلوك بالصفق أذاب القبر أذاب القبر أذاب البرزق The punishment of the grave or the punishment of that transition between the grave and Yawm al from the point when we die and until we are raised again, we are resurrected. Adhab al-Qabr, or it could be called Adhab al It's the same thing more or less. The Prophet ﷺ encourages to understand that the Qabr can be rawbatun min riyad al-Jannah or it could be hufratun min hufarin niran which means that it could be a garden of paradise for us or it could be a ditch of the fire asallallahu alayhi wa sallam an yaj'al quburana rawbatan min riyad al-jannah wa la yaj'alha hufratan min hufarin niran Allahumma ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He may make our barzak or our qabr, the grave, a place of paradise, a place of felicity and nicety, and not a ditch of the fire of Jahannam. But when we talk about barzak, when we talk about qabr, the possibility it could go either way. Depends on the deeds of the individual, depending on the faith of the individual, depending on the commitment of the individual, depending on the iman of the individual. We talked about this hadith briefly last week when we talk about the ditch of fire. And this applies specifically to the disbeliever. When they're being asked about the questions, Man Rabbuke, who is your master? Ma dinuke, what is your religion? And what do you know about this man referring to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And obviously, his response would be that he doesn't know anything. So he would respond by saying, Ha, ha, la adri. Ha, ha, la adri. And they would come to him. Heat and hot wind, all from the fire of hell, experiencing just a taste of it in his grave. And his grave is being constricted, and it compresses him until his ribs interlock. And there comes to him someone in the shape of a man with an ugly face and ugly clothing and foul stench, and who says, Receive the bad news. This is the day that you were promised. And you may say, Who are you? Your face is a face which forebodes evil. He says, I am your evil deeds. And I am a look, al Khabif. I'm your evil deeds. And when he sees that, and he experiences that, he says, Rabbi, la tuqim as Don't allow the hour to come. Don't allow Yawm al to come. Keep me away from them, because he can see punishment ahead. He can see the terror ahead. He can see the fire ahead. He can see the torment ahead. So he will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to let the sad the hour to appear of the coming. I'm not a punishment. The Prophet talks about a people of this category. He says they have been smashed by a huge sledgehammer. So much so that it becomes like the dust. And everything that happens, he returns back to his former shape or his former form. And this keeps on repeating. And he screams in agonizing pain. And he's heard by everyone except human beings and jinns why because human beings and jinns are being tested in this world today the dominant of the quran is for human beings and jinns allah subhanahu reminds us of this punishment when one speaks about the punishment available cover is in the hadith of the prophet وسلم, and it's also in ayat in the quran so we have available cover in the grave, is it mentioned in the Qur'an? The punishment of the grave, is that mentioned in the Qur'an? The punishment of the Akhirah, is that mentioned in the Qur'an? 
And sometimes you get a bit baffled with philosophical argument to say it's not there. Well, listen to these ayat from the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. And who is more unjust than the one who invents a lie about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that it has been inspired to me when well, nothing has been inspired to him. He's claiming to have revelation, but he didn't receive any revelation. I will reveal something like that what Allah revealed, claiming that he's getting revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he didn't. And if you could but see when the wrongdoers are in the overwhelming pangs of death, while the angels extend their hearts. Discharge your souls, meaning let your souls out of your body while they're experiencing this overwhelming pangs of death. And the angels extend their hearts saying, That today, you would have the taste of the punishment. Al yawma tujizona. Al yawma today means that when it starts in Barsak, when the soul is leaving the body, al yawma from that point. Al yawma tujizona adab al hoon. From that point, you would be awarded a punishment, an extreme humiliation for what you used to do and what you used to say against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, other than the truth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah talks about adab al-qabr and it's important for to understand it because it comes from the Quran itself as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us about this punishment of humiliation. Adab al Another ayah in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa talks about the punishment, the double punishment that will reach munafiqoon. And among those around you of the Bedouins are hypocrites. And also from the people of Medina. They have become accustomed to hypocrisy, to nifaq. You, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa you do not know them. But we know them. We will punish them twice. سَنُعَذِّبُهُ مَرَّتَيْنِ We will punish them twice. ثُمَّ يَرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَذَابٍ عَظِيمٍ And then they will be returned to a great punishment, the fire of hell. They'll be punished twice. And twice, according to the scholars and the ulama on the fuqah, refers to in this world and in the qabr itself. So, نُعَذِّبُهُمْ مَرَّتَيْنِ ثُمَّ تَرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَذَابٍ عَظِيمٍ So we are talking about three punishments. We are talking about three places where they're going to be punished. One in this world, the second in Barzakh, and the third in in the Akhirah with Jahannam, Yawm al and then subsequently in Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from the punishment of Jahannam, from the punishment of the Qabr, and even from the punishment and humiliation in this world. But the Prophet sallallahu used to make this dua. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min a'adhaab Jahannam, wa na'udhu bika min a'adhaab al-Qabr, wa na'udhu bika من فتنة المسيح الدجال ونعوذ بك من فتنة المحيا وممات. So the Prophet ﷺ used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us, to save himself from the punishment of Jahannam, the fire of hell, from the punishment of the qabr, the grave, the barzakh, from the punishment and the trials and tribulations of the jail, and from the trials and tribulations in this life and even from death. It's a wonderful dua. By the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ tells us another hadith. And when he talks of this hadith, he talks about a punishment. The punishment that one would experience in the grave itself. Just because he does not take care of himself, take care of cleaning himself, avoid himself to being soiled by urine. The Prophet ﷺ says, Innahuma la yu'adhaban. Innahuma la yu'adhaban. That these two are being punished here. وَمَا يُعَذَّبَانَ فِي كَبِيرٍ But they're not being punished for grave sins, for huge sins, for big sins. أَمَّا أَحْدُهُمَا فَكَانَ لَا يَسْتَتِرُوا مِنَ الْبَوْلِ One of them, he didn't use to save himself from being soiled with his urine. وَأَمَّا الْآخَرِ And the other one, فَكَانَ يَمْشِي بِالنَّمِيمَةِ 
He could not give up backbiting. All over the place, he's talking about other people. All is like to slander other people, talking bad things about other people. These two people are being punished now in the grave because of these sins that they have committed. Backbiting and sword with urine incurred the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Ibn Abbas, who narrated that the Prophet said that these occupants in the graves, they are being tormented. But not for grievous sins, but because they love carrying tales, gossiping, backbiting, saying ill things about other people, love to entertain themselves in that. But the Prophet he called for a fresh twig of a palm tree. He split it into two parts. So he planted on each grave one of the twig of the palm tree. Perhaps saying, perhaps their punishment may be mitigated, lightened, as long as these twigs remain fresh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us again in the Quran when we talk about the punishment in the Akhirah, punishment in the Khabar, the punishment in Barzakh. وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ يَتَوَفَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الْمَلَائِكَةِ يَضْرِبُونَ وُجُوهَهُمْ وَأَدْبَارُهُمْ وَذُوكُوا عَذَابَ الْحَرِيقِ And if you could see them, if you could see when the angels take the souls of those who disbelieve, they're striking their faces and their backs, they're saying, taste the punishment of the burning fire. But when do they do that? يَضْرِبُونَ وُجُوهَهُمْ Striking their backs and striking their faces. And they say, الحريق, When do they do that? When they are just separated from this world. That's the point of time when they start facing the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the grave itself, it could be very dark and you can also have light. That's important for us to understand. And again, all of this depends on our deeds and the things that we do in this world. Stay away from slandering, stay away from backbiting, stay away from uncleanliness, stay away from the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids us to do. If you can stay away from all those things, if you can be an embodiment of the Quran, the understanding of the ayat and the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that would bring us the light in the akhirah and more so in the grave itself. It's narrated that the black woman used to sweep the mosque when she died. The Prophet وسلم, asked about her because when she died, they buried her during the night. They didn't inform the Prophet وسلم, because they didn't want to bother him. But when he noticed that she was missing, he did ask about her. And then they said, indeed, she died and she was buried. So the Prophet وسلم, said, you know, show me her grave. So they showed him the grave. He went to the grave. He offered a funeral prayer. And then he said that her grave was filled with darkness. And my prayer would provide some light for her in the grave. And hopefully that would give light to all the people. To her, the salah of the Prophet وسلم, gives light in the grave. In the grave itself, where any one of you die, he is shown his place, both in the morning and the evening. That is his place of Jannah, or his place of Jahannam. He's being seen in the morning, and he's being seen in the afternoon. If he's one of the people of paradise, he is shown his place in it. And if he's a people, or one of the people from the hellfire, he is shown his place therein. Then it said to him, this is your place till Allah resurrect you on the day of judgment. Abu Huraira narrated that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse and warn your tribe, warn your people, the messenger of Allah got up and he said, O oh, people of Quraysh, save yourselves. O oh, people of Quraysh, save yourself. O oh, Bani Abdul Manaf, I can't save you from the wrath of Allah, from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Save yourself. O oh, Safiya, aunt of Allah's messenger, I cannot save you from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Save yourself. O oh, Fatima bint Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ask me anything that you want of the wealth or whatever I possess, but I cannot save you from the wrath and from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I cannot save you from the punishment in the akhirah. It's a similar situation for all of us that we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from the al-qabr 
are available the berserk from the punishment in the grave, from the punishment in hereafter. And that is why the Prophet وسلم, encourages that when someone dies, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him. Istaghfiru li akhikum wa salu lahu tathbeet. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive your brother. Istaghfiru li akhikum wa salu lahu tathbeet. Fa innahu al-an yus'al. That indeed he's being questioned now. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him and to make him steadfast and firm. Steadfastness, that's what he needs. For he's being questioned now in the cover. That's the time we need stability. That's the time when we need uh, the dua of other people. That's the time when we need to be firm in our aqeel because we are being questioned in the cover. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran when he talks about Fir'aun and he talks about his people and he talks about the deeds, the wicked deeds they were involved in, and the consequence of those deeds. He says, That the fire, they're exposed to in the morning and evening. It doesn't mean they're inside the fire, but it means the fire is exposed to them. They're constantly being tormented. They're tormented by the wrath and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fire they are exposed to it in the morning and the evening because all of this happens in Barzakh itself. And on the day, that's the day of judgment, it will be said, Make the people of Pharaoh enter the severest punishment. So you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear that Pharaoh and the family of Pharaoh, they were exposed to the punishment in Barzakh, in the cover. Well, they were not inside of the fire itself. So it's not as yet that you're actually inside of the fire, but you're not going to have it continuously. So one of the way of tormenting those people who rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Barzakh is that they're being exposed to it. Nar, Jahannam, exposed to it morning and evening until the day of Qiyam, until the day of Qiyamah appears, and then it will be said to them, Now make the people of Pharaoh, make them enter the superior punishment, because that's what they deserve. Sometimes we think about how should we conduct our life? What are the things that we should be thinking about? When we hear about the punishment in the grave, the punishment in the akhirah, when we hear about Jannah, we hear about the felicity in Jannah, we hear about the good things that we can have even in Qabr. Now, some of the good things we can have, we can all have, also have good things in this world. We can have it in the Qabr. We can have it in the Akhirah. We can have it in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And subsequently, Jannah. And likewise, we can be punished in this world. We can be punished in Sakarat al -Mawd. We can be punished in Barzakh. And following that, we can be punished in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And subsequently, going to Jahannam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us away from that. Allah says, but my mind, I do not combine two fair together. You know, if somebody is fair, is fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, then he's going to be in a safe place in the akhirah. But if he always have a sense of safety in this world, and he doesn't think about the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he would be in a state of fear in the akhirah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not combine two fair together. Meaning that you could be scared in this world of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then in the akhirah it's the same thing. No, it would be the opposite. For those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, it means they will end up doing the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. But those who do not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they feel that everything is safe and sound in this world, but then they have no sense of acknowledgement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will be facing the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the akhirah. The punishment entails or possibly three categories. Those with no punishment. And those are the sincere believers like that of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And they would go to Jannah. So everything would be easy for them. No punishment in the Qabr. No punishment in Barzakh. And those with punishment that would go to Jahannam, like what I've just explained because of the Ahadith 
or the Prophet وسلم, and the ayat uh, from the Quran. And then there are some people that may have intermittent punishment as a means of expiating their sins, like the difficulties you go through in this world, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expiate your sins, or even at Sakarat al Maut, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expiate your sins, or even in the Qabr, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expiate your sins, or even when Yawm al Qiyamah, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expiate your sins, or even on the Sirat, on the bridge itself, on Yawm al Qiyamah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expiates your sins. And there are some that will go to Jahannam for a short while to just expiate their sins and get rid of their sins and become purified to go to Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those people who are already purified and they will be able to enter Jannah. Hassan al-Ghassari says on the same aspect of fear that people do terrify us until our hearts are broken. It is better when you are taught about a fear of a hereafter than being safe and sound in this world or not being taught of any fear whatsoever. So you feel that you're safe and sound in this world and then suddenly you are faced with terror and you are faced with the inevitable. That is Al-Maut, Sakarat Al-Maut, Al-Maut or Adhab al So it's better off that if people do enhance our understanding in such a way so that we can understand how terrible Sakarat al maut could be, Adhab al qabr could be, Barzakh could be, or even Yawm al qiyamah It is important for us to understand that. I know sometimes there are people that will listen to nice good, good Islamic lectures when you talk about Sakarat al maut or you talk about the maut itself, or you talk about Adhab al qabr or Adhab al barzakh you talk about these things, people become very tearful and they cry bitterly because they become so emotional. And then even with all of that, some people may change and some people may not even change. It doesn't make a difference to them. It's just an emotional moment that they just go through for a few minutes. And after that, they get back to the routine in life and it doesn't affect their heart, it doesn't affect their mind, it doesn't affect their thoughts, it doesn't affect anything whatsoever. And subsequently, they go back to the former attitudes and habits that they were involved in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from that. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enhance our knowledge and make us understand Adhab al-Qabr, Adhab al-Barzaq, and even Adhab al-Yawm al qiyamah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us in our understanding. May He install that understanding in fear so that we can all appreciate those moments when they do come. He will continue with the topic Adhab al Qabr or Adhab al Barzaq, the punishment of the grave or the punishment in the transition period, the punishment in Barzaq. And uh, tonight, inshallah, I want to introduce the topic tonight with a hadith of the Prophet is a thought provoking hadith. Where the Prophet وسلم, he passed by a janaza and he made a statement. Mustarihun wa mustarahun min. Implying that when someone dies, is at ease, or others at ease. Mustarihun wa mustarahun min. Faqalu. So the Sahaba, when they heard the statement of the Prophet, وسلم, they said, Ya Rasulullah, can you explain to us what is meant by these terminologies that you just used? Mustarihun wa mustarahun min. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-abdul mu'min yastarihu min nasabi dunya wa adhaha. It's an amazing statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, when one talks about someone being at ease or others being at ease or when someone being at rest or other being placed in rest is referring to the janazah. The janazah that just, by, just passed by is referring to that. Whether he's a good person or he's a bad person. Whether he's a pious person or he's a vicious person. Whether he's a pious person or a wicked person. So the Prophet says, 
But when a believer dies, Al-Abd al-Mu'min, Yassarihu min nasab dunya wa adaha. That when he dies or she dies, then he is in a state of relief from all the difficulties and calamities in the world. All the hardships that's been going through, all the pain and tests that he was going through have come to an end. What Abdul Fajr, and for the vicious one, يَسْتَرِيحُ مِنْهُ الْعِبَادُ وَالْبِلَادُ وَالشَّجَرُ وَالدَّوَابُ And for the vicious person when he dies, then the countries and the villages and the towns, and the people, and even the trees and the animals, they're all at ease because of his vicious deeds, because of his wicked deeds. But the things that he had been doing, he had just been beating the hell out of them. So they're all at ease now because of the wrong things that he's been doing. Have we not seen it in the world today that when someone dies, there are people who will be extremely happy because this person has passed away because of the wickedness in his life, because of the viciousness in his life, because of the oppression that he has caused to many people. And have you not seen a person who dies, then people are in a state of grief because of the goodness of that person, because of the good deeds that person has done, and because of the piety that he has exhibited. So this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, is a thought-provoking hadith for us to think about when we think about the janazah, when we think about someone passing away, and when we think about someone moving into this stage of barzakh. We continue with the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that usually when the Prophet prays Salat al-Fajr, he would ask his companions, he would face him and he would ask him that, uh, is there anyone amongst you who had a dream last night? And sometimes they would say what they've had and sometimes they wouldn't because they haven't had a dream. In this case, they say, no, la, ya Rasulullah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated to them, I had this dream last night that two men came to me, caught all of my hands, and he took me to a sacred land. And there I saw a person sitting and another standing with an iron hook in his hand, pushing it inside the mouth of the former till it reached the jawbone and then tore apart one side of his cheek and then did the same to the other side of the cheek. And in the meanwhile, while he was ripping apart the other side of the cheek, the first side of the cheek became normal again. And then he repeated the same act again and again. And I said, that's the Prophet Sallallahu what is this? And he was told, in Toliku, proceed, continue, move on. Until he came to a man lying flat on his back. And another man standing at his head, carrying a stone or a piece of rock and crushing the head of the man lying down. What a stone. When he struck him, the stone rolled away. The man went to pick it up. And by the time he returned to him, the crushed head had returned to his normal state. And the man came back and struck him again. And it continues like that. So the Prophet said, Who is this? And he was told, Continue, proceed, move on. So they proceeded until they passed by a hole like that of an oven with a narrow top and a wide bottom. And the fire was kindling underneath that hole. Whenever it flamed up, or the fire flame went up, they cried out loudly. The people were lifted to such an extent that they were about to get out of it. And whenever the fire got quieter, the people went down into it. And they were naked men and women in it. So the Prophet وسلم, said, Man hadha? Who is this? And he was told in Tolibu, proceed, continue, move on, until they reach a river of blood. And a man was in this river, and another man was standing at its bank with stones in front of him, facing the man standing in the river. Whenever the man in the river wanted to come out, the other one threw stone in his mouth and caused him to retreat, pelting him with stones so that he'd need to retreat to his original position. That continues like that again and again. So every time he tries to come out, 
The other man is throwing stones in his mouth, pelting him, punishing him. And he would retreat to his original position. So the Prophet ﷺ asked, What is this? They taught, they taught him, it was said to him, that continue, proceed, move on. No explanation was given. Continue until they reach a well flourished green garden having a huge tree. And near its roots was sitting an old man with some children. Another man was near the tree with fire in front of him and he was kindling it up. He was ensuring that there was all this fire. Then they, that is the two companions, that were with the Prophet in his dream, made him to climb up a tree. I made him to enter house, better than which I've ever seen, which he has seen, the Prophet They were old men, young men, women, children. Then they took the Prophet out of this house and made him climb up the tree. So he went up the tree and saw a better, superior, and more blossoming house containing old and young people and said to what is the meaning of all this? Tell me all about that which I have seen. So again, he was told in follicle, move on, keep moving on until the angel explained to him exactly what's happening. One of the things that we need to understand is that one, is that whatever happens in Barzakh is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَقَدْ أُوْحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّكُمْ تَفْتَنُونَ فِي الْقُبُورِ That you're going to be tested in the grave. And this is an example of that, that people are being tested in the grave, and because of that, they receive a level of punishment in Barzakh, in the grave. And that punishment is not an ultimate punishment, but it's about partial punishment that leads to the final abode. So when the Prophet وسلم, asked his two men that were with him to explain to him, what's the reason behind all of this? Can you explain to me what is going on? They said, yes. As for the one whose cheek you saw being torn away, he was a liar. And he used to tell lies. And the people would repeat those lies on his authority till they spread it all over the world. So he would be punished like that until the day of judgment. A punishment in Barzakh. But the one whose head you saw being crushed is the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given knowledge, knowledge of the Quran. Perhaps knowing the Quran by heart. But he used to sleep at night. He did not recite the Quran. He, does not, he didn't practice the Quran. He didn't implement the Quran in his life. It didn't have any meaning to him. He did not use it to the best of his ability. He did not act upon it. He did not act upon its order, not even during the day. So this punishment will be for him until the day of resurrection. As for the one that you have seen, or the group of people you have seen in the hall, like that of an oval, they were the adulterers, those men and women who committed illegal sexual intercourse. And for the scene that you have seen, that the river filled with blood and there was someone pelting stones into the mouth of the other person who was trying to get out of the river. The one who was trying to get out of the river is the one who loved being in the river, in usury, in interest. He loved sucking the blood of other people to get their money financially or to get benefits from them financially. And if the old man who was sitting at the base of the tree was Ibrahim السلام, and the little children around him were the offspring of the people. And as for the one who was kindling the fire was Malik, the gatekeeper of Jahannam. In this dream of the Prophet وسلم, it summarizes different types of punishment in Barzakh. We should also understand that the dreams of prophets are true. That's part of the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever they dreamt of is part of the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in these scenes that we have seen, 
there are different punishments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stipulates for people because of the sins they have committed. And that's what they would face in barzakh. It's not a complete punishment. It's just a partial punishment until Yawm al And then whether we go to Jannah or Jahannam. That's the time when you can be in a state of regret. That's the time you can be in a state of remorse. That's the time when you think about that. If we had a chance, we can go back and do good deeds. Or we can go back and give charity. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, that I may go back and do some righteous deeds which I have left behind. Meaning I was supposed to do those righteous deeds and I didn't do it. I was supposed to be righteous, but I didn't. I was supposed to be pious, but I didn't. I was supposed to follow the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but I didn't. I was supposed to read Salatul Janazah for someone, I didn't. I was supposed to give zakah, but I didn't. I was supposed to pray my salah, but I didn't. I was supposed to be fasting in the month of Ramadan, but I didn't. I was supposed to take care of my parents, but I didn't. I was supposed to carry out my responsibilities towards my children, but I didn't. I was supposed to be spending time reciting Quran and understanding it, but I didn't. I was supposed to be reading the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, but I didn't. So many things I was supposed to be doing, but I didn't. That indeed, it's only a word that you're uttering. Although they are in the state of remorse and the state of regret, they would, although they're saying these things verbally, that it would only be a word that they utter. It's only a verbalization of which has no meaning whatsoever. They're only uttering these words. But if they have given the chance, they go back there, they're going to do the same thing. And then they remain in the state of barzakh. And behind them is a barrier until the day of resurrection. Meaning they are in this transition period, in this barzakh, in this semi-Jahannam state, which is barzakh, until they will be resurrected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are some of the different types of punishments that we can have in the state of barzak itself. All the punishments that we can incur in this state of barzak relates to some of these things. Some of us are guilty of some of these acts that we have seen, spreading malicious gossip, telling lies, backbiting, giving false witness, slandering those who are chaste and innocent, spread fitna, promote bid'ah, promote innovation, say things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger without any knowledge. Sometimes we speak so reckless in whatever we want to say and we think we've read a few books and we know all of it over the hadith and the Quran and we end up saying things that don't please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who consume your riba, consume the wealth of the orphans and even consume wealth in a haram way or they involve in bribery or the like manner, these are all acts that will incur the punishment even in barzakh. And those who even consume the wealth of their Muslim brothers and sisters unlawfully. There are people who do that. There are people who borrow money from people and they don't want to give it back. They want to be in a state of debt and they forget about death itself. They forget about their sense of accountability. They talk about Islam. They hear about Islam. They have read books and they know the consequence. And still with that, they would not discharge their responsibility. Because the iman is not there. Because the piety is not there. Because the commitment is not there. So they end up consuming the wealth of other people and even those of non-Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all these vicious acts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from those vicious deeds so that we can be saved from the punishment in the barzakh. And that is why the Prophet Sallallahu has given us a dua going through this phase and listening to this lecture and understanding these ahadith of the Prophet, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the question automatically comes to us. Well, then what shall we do so that we can save ourselves from these different types of punishment? One of it, not to be guilty of backbiting. Two, to stop those vicious deeds. Three, not to be guilty of racism not to be guilty of being unfair to other people. Establish equity, establish fairness, 
Stay away from all these vices. Stay away from all these evil deeds. And recite this dua that the Prophet وسلم, taught the Sahaba. In fact, he spent time teaching them this dua as if he would be teaching them the surah. The same time that he spent teaching them a surah from the Quran, he would teach them this dua. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min a'adhaab jahannam wa a'udhu bika min a'adhaab al-qabr wa a'udhu bika min fitnat al-masih al-dajjal wa a'udhu bika min fitnat al-mahya wal-mamat It's about seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, we seek refuge in you from the torment of jahannam, from the torment of hell. We seek refuge in you from the torment of the grave. We seek refuge in you from the tribulation of al-masih al-dajjal we seek refuge in you from the trials of this life and even of death because we want to be saved from all these calamities, from all these trials, from all these tribulations, and we want to have a sense of peace. We want to be at ease when we die. Like the first hadith I began with, we want to be mustarihun. We want to be at ease. We want to be at rest. We want to have a sense of relaxation when we die, we can only have that when our deeds are compatible with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us to do or not to do. Another wonderful hadith to understand is the Prophet ﷺ tells us that if you want to save ourselves from Jahannam, or you want to save ourselves from the punishment of the grave, per se, from the adhab al-qabr wa adhab al-barzak, then Study this surah in the Quran. Surah Al-Mulk. Surah Al-Mulk. It's an amazing surah in the Quran. But the Prophet ﷺ says that anyone who memorizes this surah, understands the surah, acts upon the surah, then the surah becomes a means of intercession for this person from any punishment that is about to invade his privacy. There is a surah in the Quran that has got 30 ayah. That indeed is amazing surah. It's a surah that would be a means of intercession for the reciter, for the one who studies it. Let's take some time. Read the surah, Surah Al-Mulk, Tabarak Al-Ladhi Bi'ri Al-Mulk, Wa'u Ala Kul Shain Khadir. Let's memorize the surah. Let's understand the surah. Let's understand the implication of the surah. Let's implement the surah in our life so it can act as a means of intercession for us in the barzak and also in the akhirah. It is important for us to do that because we want a sense of security. We want a sense of safety, and we can only have it by using the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By being connected to the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would also forgive our sins. It's a good surah that we need to recite. Pops every night and every day so that we can be in tune with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's amazing surah in the Quran. There's also another hadith of an Ibn, Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala an. That he says that يؤتى الرجل في قبره فتؤتى رجله فتقول that there are people who try to invade the privacy of an individual in Barzak itself in order to punish him and then because he has been connected with the surah ليس لكم على ما قبل سبيل there is no place for you كان يقوم يقرأ ب سورة الملك that indeed this person is connected with Surah Al-Mulk and Surah Al-Mulk becomes a protection for him. Protection from any side of anyone or anything try to invade his safety or security in Barzakh, Surah Al-Mulk would be the answer and the sense of safety or would provide a sense of safety. These are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the words we need to memorize, we need to understand, we need to implement, and subsequently we will gain the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's make that an assignment for us so that for the next week we can focus on Surah Al-Mulk. 
pops to memorize it. Let's start memorize the ayat of the surah. Only 30 ayat. If you think about memorizing three ayat every day, in 10 days, you will finish the entire surah. And it becomes part and parcel of your thinking process and part and parcel of your life. And it will help you also in barzuk. And it will help you on yawm al qiyamah and in the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that insight, that understanding, commitment, so that we can be closely attached at least to the surah, surah al-mulk, so that they can change our life.